I want to thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you're here. You know, we exist as a church to help you experience all that Jesus is so that you can become all you were meant to be. So if the ministry of Crossroads Church has impacted you in any way, we'd love to hear about it. Let us know your story at mycrossroadschurch.com. You can also help us to continue sharing the hope of Jesus around the globe by investing into our ministry. To do so, simply visit us at mycrossroadschurch.com slash give or by downloading the My Crossroads app and selecting give. Thanks again for joining us and I hope you enjoy today's message. You can be seated at this time or give, give someone a big high five, welcome them to church today. Um, but no, we're just so excited to be joining together um, on this uh, very uh, challenging and unexpected situation. Um, you know, as Pastor Joel mentioned uh, earlier, we are in a, a time that's unprecedented. There's, in my lifetime, um, and I'm 40-something years old, in my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this before. There's never been a time in American history when, when churches all over the nation are, are not meeting in a public space, um, even in wartime. This has never happened before. This is unprecedented. And, and I'm just so glad that you've taken the time to join us this Sunday and that you're here with us in your home, in your office, in your car, wherever you're at. We're glad that you're here. And, and hey, I just want to say, Crossroads, that we love you. We love you and we miss you. Um, if you're normally here on a, on a Sunday morning at the Crossroads building, Building. Um, we miss you. We miss seeing you. We are praying that, that this time uh, does not last very long. But until uh, the end of all of this, uh, we're just thrilled that, that you're joining us. I also want to extend just a warm welcome to those of you who, uh, as Pastor Joel mentioned, might be joining us from across the country or maybe even around the world. Man, we're just so excited that, that you have joined in with us today, and we pray that you would experience uh, the presence of God even through your computer screen, through your phone screen today. Well, we're actually beginning a brand new message series, um, and you may have seen this a little bit on our, our social media, but um, we're, we're titling this message series, Faith Over Fear, Faith Over Fear, and, and I just have a short message that I want to share with you today. I'm going to pull my computer screen open here, um, and and, and this this message, I believe, is is something that that every single one of us need to hear in this time. I know that that we're just surrounded uh, by bad news and 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 fearful talk. It's everywhere. It's on our TVs. It's on our social media feeds. Uh, it's it's on our phones. It's it's everywhere we look. There is this this talk of fearful. Uh, uh, things to worry about, things to, to have anxiety over. And we just believe so strongly that, that um, fear does not come from God and, and that we want to urge you to stand in faith over the next couple of weeks as we try to figure this out and see where we're going next. Um, but I, I, I want to say that even though our way of meeting together may be changing and it may look completely different than what we're all used to. Um, what, here's what I wanna promise you, um, especially to our Crossroads family. This is the one thing that will never change is that we're going to continue doing everything that we can, everything in our power to um, help you to experience all that Jesus is so that you can become all that you were meant to be. That, that even in the midst of this craziness, even in the midst of brokenness and, and, and the fearful uh, language that you hear everywhere you go, even in the midst of, of sickness and disease and, and, and wondering if, if it's going to hit your household and, and all that, that comes into play with something like this, we, we want you to know that, that this is what will not change, is that we are going to do everything we can to help you experience God in the midst of all of this. And, and we believe that as you experience who He is, that you're going to become more like Him, and that you're going to become uh, all that you were meant to be and created to be. 
And so even, uh, I, I want to speak specifically um, to those of you who um, may have just been flipping through on your Facebook feed and somehow came across this video, <laughs> uh, or, or maybe a friend has shared it with you, or they've tagged you on it, invited you to watch. I just want to speak to you specifically. You may not be a part of the Crossroads family. You might not have any idea who I am or who this person is that's talking to me right now, but listen, I want to say something to you specifically. Specifically, and that's this, is that you are seen and that you are known and that God is with you even in this moment, even whatever you're facing, no matter what you're facing, no matter the fear, the anxiety, or maybe you've, you, you're even dealing with the coronavirus. Maybe you're in a hospital room. I don't know what your situation is, but, but I just want to encourage you and I want you to know that you are seen, that you are known, and that God loves you so much that he is watching you and, and that he is caring for you and he loves you. And, and, and I want you to hear that today. And, and I know this because Jesus actually, his very words were this in Matthew 10, 29 and 30, uh, through 31. Jesus said this, not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. The Bible says Jesus, his own words are that he knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows the moment a sparrow falls to the ground. And he, Jesus wants you to know that you are more valuable to, to him than a whole flock of sparrows, that, that, that you are of worth to him and that he is watching over you. He cares for you. He loves you. And it is not a mistake that you've joined in today. It's not a mistake that you're watching this. It is not a mistake that you're hearing these words right now. God loves you. You are precious to him and he cares for you. He's with you and he is for you. Now, these are undeniably crazy days. I, like I said before, they, these are days that, that I have never seen before in my whole life. Um, you know, just the other day, it took, uh, between my husband and I, it took us four stores to find chicken. I mean, forget the toilet paper. We just wanted chicken for dinner. <laughs> and we could not find chicken anywhere. But you know what I noticed more than the, the empty shelves of no meat, no chicken, is I noticed the faces of the people going in and out of the aisles. And, and, and there was just this look of shock. There was this look of what is happening. You know, for me, it was after work. I had just gotten, uh, I was leaving the office and, and in the store, um, I think I was probably amongst a lot of people who um, had been at work all day. And when they got to the store, it was a shock to see that the, that the store had just been wiped clean and almost a reality of how close to home this really is. And, um, you know, I've seen the anxiety posts on Facebook. You know, I see people are saying things like, I'm so full of anxiety right now, I'm just gonna hide in my bed until it's over. You know, I'm hearing people that I love, people that I know that, that are, are wondering if they can get to, to CVS to get their prescriptions. And, and, and there's just this, this great level of fear and anxiety. And, and we also have this media and, and partisan politics that are pumping out just this, this talk of, of fear and hopelessness. And listen to me, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we, we're going to absorb and, and internalize feelings instead of the facts. And so I just want to encourage you that, that I'm, not, I'm not asking you to pretend that, that this isn't happening because it is. It's a reality. I'm not asking you to pretend. I'm asking you to use prudence and, and at the very same time of using prudence, that you would protect your mind and your heart from the, the fear that's circulating everywhere you turn. You see it in people's eyes. You see it on your social media feeds. You're seeing it in public. You're seeing it on the news. You're seeing it everywhere you go. You're hearing it. And I just want to encourage you to protect your mind and hearts from allowing your heart to absorb that fear. Uh, use prudence and absorb the facts, but but. But fear is not from God. In fact, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says this, God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity. He's not given you that feeling that wants you to shrink back and hide. That's not from God. But going on, it says he's given you the spirit of power, 
of love and of a sound mind. That's one version. Another version says that he's given you the, the, the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. And, and, and just to reiterate, fear does not come from God. If you are feeling fear right now, if you are feeling anxiety over the future, if, you're, if that uncertainty of life that we, nobody really knows how this is going to pan out, if you're feeling anxiety over that, you need to hear that that is not from God. It's not. That is not from God. God does not give us a spirit of fear. He's given us the spirit of power, love, and of self-discipline. Now, this passage in 2 Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, these are not just words. You know, we know that he was a preacher. These are not just eloquent words that, that he thought up and thought this would be a cool thing to encourage my, my, my son in the faith, Timothy, with. Th- th- these are not just things that he came up with. No, this is Paul's experience. See, Paul was a man who has experienced hardship after hardship after hardship. And I'm not talking about the kind of hardships that we're facing today. I'm not talking about the kind of hardships that, that, that we often get so overwhelmed with. I'm talking about hardships that look like being beaten with whips multiple, multiple times, almost until death. I'm talking about being thrown out into the village square and being stoned and left for dead. I'm talking about hardships that look like a shipwreck and not knowing if he's going to live through it. I'm talking about, uh, and this one really freaks me out, getting bitten by a snake. He's been through it all. Paul has been through so many hardships that we would never even, can, could never even imagine for ourselves. And here he is telling his spiritual son, Timothy, that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Now, Paul had every reason to be riddled with fear and anxiety. He had every reason to fear for his life. But in his his pushing through the difficulties that he faced, he learned that by God, through God, that God has given him so many times more than he can count, that God has gifted him with power to do miraculous things with this spirit of love, to love his enemies, to love people that that have persecuted him, that God has given him a spirit of having self-discipline and and pushing forward and and, and controlling his thoughts and having, uh, as one version says, a sound mind. And, and, and like I said, he had every reason to be fearful, but he, he chose to endure through that hardship and to allow God to give him everything that he needed to do so, even in his hardship, even in his uncertainty, even when there were, he was going through situations just like we are today that were out of his control Paul had learned that God had not given him a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And so I just want to really quick, in the last moments that I have with you, talk about those three things. The gift of power, that spirit of power, that that spirit of love, and the spirit of of self-discipline. First of all, God has given us the spirit of power. And if you look at the original language that this was written in, the power, the word that's used in the Greek is dynamis. And I don't know if that sounds very familiar to you, but it's actually the same root word that we use for the root, root for the word dynamite. Dynamis, power. It's explosive power. It's mighty, miraculous power. And God has given us the gift of this kind of power. It's the power, listen to me, to overcome fear to overcome anxiety, to overcome the spirit of depression. God has given us the miraculous, mighty, explosive, supernatural power to say no to fear, to overcome fear. And if Jesus is Lord of your life, if you have chosen, if you have decided to follow Jesus, then you need to know this, that that he has given you as his follower a spirit of power. Romans 8, 11 says that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. 
That same power that caused a dead body that was beaten black and blue, uh, bloodied and bruised and, and torn apart, the flesh torn apart, if that same spirit of power that was in Jesus that caused him to rise from the dead, that resurrection power, if it could do that for him, listen, that same power is in you. And you can stand on that promise, Romans 8, 11, stand on that promise, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and me. It's resurrection power. It's explosive, mighty, miraculous power. And, and I know that you're, you're hearing these words and you're thinking, but I am scared. I am feeling this anxiety. I, I don't know how this is going to turn out. There is nothing that I can do to stop this. But listen to me, you've got power. You've got the gift of his power. You've got the gift of his dynamis dynamite, explosive, miraculous power. It's in you. So lean, listen, as you hear more bad news on the news, as you are, are, are hearing the anxiety from your friends, as, as this is just coming at you, don't lean into the fear. Lean into the power and receive the power that God has for you. The second thing that Paul tells us, it, we, we have that spirit of power. We also have a spirit of love. And this is so important. The Greek word that Paul uses for, the, for love in this passage is agape. And many of us may, may or may not know what that means. Agape love is unconditional. That, that it's given without having to be earned. That it is given unconditionally. If, if you do further study on the word of agape, that, that actually goes even further to say that it's goodwill and compassion. It's a love that, that looks like charity and benevolence, that it is, is acts of service. It is, it is showing, it is an active, not a passive love. It is an act, active love, a love of action. And God has given you and me the spirit of love, the spirit of agape love, not just love for us to receive, which absolutely is a gift, that love from God is, is a gift that we should thank him for every single day. But it's not just a gift for us to receive. It's also a gift and a love to give away. Um, God, God we, we, you, you see this on posters at the games. God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You know what I want to focus on right now is that God loved us so much that he gave everything. He gave us his only son. That is agape love right there. It, that is love that we didn't earn. It's not love that we deserve. It's love that is freely given. And God so generously gave us everything. He gave us the gift of his son. That is, that is what agape love looks like. So to be loved by God means that we are loved to give that love away. It means that as God loves us, we are to give that love to others. Jesus commands us in John 13, 34, love each other just as I have loved you. That's a strong, strong word right there, you guys. Jesus says to love each other just as I have loved you. That's the way that we should love each other. You know, the world is not expecting for Christians to love them in that way. They're not. The world is not expecting for anyone to love them in that way. The world is expecting for everyone to hunker down and to protect themselves and to, 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 to uh, circle the wagons and, and not think about the needs of others. But listen, Jesus has commanded us as his followers that we're to love others in the way that he first loved us. And he gave everything for us. So God has given us that spirit of love. He's given us that agape love to love others just the same way that he's loved us. You know, he's act, he, and what does this look like for us in this, this time? I know that many of us are not able to, to, to talk to people face to face or hang out with them. Uh, but, but listen, God is asking that we would love others in the midst of this fear-driven society that God is, God is looking for us to love others in the way that he does. That means that, that even the people that you feel don't deserve it, even the people that, that are just kind of hateful in their language or, 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 or fear-mongering, listen, God wants you to love them the way that he's loved you. In the midst of all of this 
People aren't expecting it, but guess what? That's what we're gonna do, Crossroads. We're gonna love others with that agape love. We're gonna love others with, with that same love that Jesus loved us with. You know what I, as I was uh, preparing for this message, I saw throughout history that Christians have actually uh, been uh, such a crucial part of, of throughout, throughout time when, when pandemics and epidemics and plagues have ravaged through nations. We have seen Christians are the ones who come to the rescue and take care for the sick and the needy and the lonely and the broken. You see this in, in the, the beginning of the church, actually uh, first century, second century, third century ch uh, uh, church as the church was developing in, an, in infancy. That, that there were multiple plagues. Um, in fact, in the second and third century, there were plagues um, that, that ravaged the Roman Empire. In fact, one of those plagues took out a quarter of the entire Roman Empire. And it was Christians who stuck around to care for the needy, who, who stuck around to care for the sick. And, and, and it baffled the world. There was a, a pagan emperor that, that was so shocked that the the that as the very people who persecuted Christians and now Christians are taking care of them. He, he couldn't understand that kind of love. And look what happened, church. As Christians took care of those that were sick during these plagues and these pandemics, guess what happened? The church exploded. The love of God uh, just saturated into the needs of people and the church exploded, meaning that, that more and more people came to Jesus because of the love that was shown during this time. The way, listen to this, the, the way that we love each other has the power to expel fear. Again, uh, in 1 John 4, 18, it says that perfect love, the love of Jesus expels fear. That's the power we have when we love others the way Jesus loved us first. Finally, I wanna wrap up with this. This is the third thing, the third gift that God's given us. Remember, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, of love, and finally of self-discipline. Self-discipline, another version says, of a sound mind. That he's given us this, this careful, rational, sensible thinking. The Greek word that's used for self-discipline in this passage, and I hope I don't uh, say this the wrong way, but sophronismos. Sophronismos means careful, rational, sensible thinking. And you know what? The world is looking for people who will have that rational, uh, careful way of thinking, of, of that self-discipline, of controlling our thoughts. Like I mentioned earlier, that, that we would control our minds, that we would protect our hearts, that we would not submit to this language of fear, but we would submit to this language of faith, that we would believe that God is in control. We may not be in control. Our government may not be in control. Our, our, our health systems may not be in control, but listen to this. God God is, he is on the throne and he is looking for, for men, women, and children who will stand in faith. They will control their, their minds and, and protect their hearts and that they would, would think the thoughts of God. How do you think the thoughts of God? You open up your Bible. You read his word. Listen, you guys, it's so easy. Get on Google and, and just Google Bible verses on fear. And you're gonna find so many passages that you can stand on, that, that you can use to, to battle and to confront the enemy of darkness, that you, that you can speak these words of truth, that you can allow the word of God to lead you and help you to navigate through this time, that you would stand and anchor yourself in faith and not allow fear to knock you down. He's given us the spirit of power. He's given us the spirit of love and he's given us the spirit of self-discipline that we can control our thoughts, that we can say no to fear, that we can protect our hearts and, and allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with his love and power and sound mind. Amen. Amen. You guys, can we just take a moment? I wanna pray for you. If you'll, if you'll just bow your heads right where you are. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come right now. I ask you to come and meet every single person at the sound of my voice. God, not, not one of us has had uh, 
the absence of the fearful thoughts, God. We, we just want to take a moment and confess to you that, that we have allowed ourselves to, 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 to stand in fear, to walk in fear, to, to try and navigate somehow uh, with these fearful thoughts. And so Lord, today, right now, we submit to you, we come to you and we ask that you would give us, we thank you for that gift, but, but Lord, right now, we just receive that gift of power and love and of a sound mind. And we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit right now in this place, right now in this room, right now in this moment, God, that you would uh, comfort us. You are the Prince of Peace. You are our comforter. And so God, we just, we wanna, we wanna receive all that you have for us today. We receive those gifts today and, and Lord, we're gonna walk in them. We're gonna, we're, we're not just gonna go to church in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be the church. We're gonna meet the needs of others, God. We're, we're gonna look for practical ways to take care of others. Uh, even if we can't see them face to face, we're gonna call them up, we're gonna check in on them. We're, we're gonna let them know that we love them, that we care for them, that we're here for them. God, even right now, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would put into the minds and the thoughts of, of everyone hearing my voice, uh, maybe one, two, three people that, that need to hear from us right now, that we would get off of this service and that we would give them a call, we'd shoot them a text, that we would say, hey, is there anything I can be praying for you about? Is there anything that you need, any, anything that I can do for you to support you in this time? Lord, I pray that you would use us in mighty ways. And God, we do ask um, that, that we would see this not as an opposition of the enemy, God, that, that we would see this as an opportunity, that we would see this as an opportunity for revival to come to this planet. Lord, this is ne never before have we seen the entire earth shaken by something all at the same time. And God, we just ask that you would bring revival to our world and you would start with us, Lord. We just pray that we would be your hands and your feet and your mouth. God, that we would be able to speak your words and show your love and walk in power and that we would have the discipline in our minds to believe that the best is yet to come even now. God, we love you so much. We thank you for being here with us today. And it's your name, Jesus, that we said together, amen. Amen. And I just want to real quick speak to um, those of you who've heard my words and you may, uh, it, it may sound so foreign to you. You hear about this Jesus that, that can give you this spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And I just want you to know that's available to you today. In fact, he is extending an invitation to you. Jesus said so many times, he said, come, follow me. And when we follow him, but we have access to, to all that he is and, and all that, that I just talked about, that power, that love, that self-discipline. And he's inviting you today. And I don't know if this is something that you might are deciding you want to do right now for the very first time, or maybe this is something that you did a long time ago and you've walked away from, from Jesus. He's inviting you to come back. And I just want to give you the opportunity to come to Jesus today, to, to, to accept his invitation, to follow him, to walk with him, to allow him to fill you with his spirit and to give you that power and that love and that self-discipline even right now. So if that's you today, please let us know. Uh, chat, put it down on, on the chat box. Uh, we're here on Facebook Live. So let us know that you're making that decision or you can fill out a connect card. Let us know that you're making that decision today. But I wanna pray with you. So I'm gonna pray out loud. And if you, right where you're at, if you wanna say your own words, go for it. That, that, that's truly what he wants to hear is to hear your heart and your voice. But I'm gonna say a prayer. And if you wanna follow along in your heart, you can do that right where you're at. And, and, and this is such a special moment. This is a moment that's gonna change the rest of your life. And so I here I just want to pray. So just if you'll take one more moment, everybody bow your heads and 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 allow God to come into this moment to call you and invite you to walk with him. Jesus, I want to follow you today. I give my life to you. I accept your invitation to follow you. 
and I confess, I, I, I repent of my sins. I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. And I ask you to come into my life and to lead me and to guide me, to fill me with your presence and your power. God, I wanna experience you. I wanna know this power and this love. God, I wanna know what it's like to have a sound mind and self-discipline to control my thoughts and protect my heart. So today, Jesus, I give my life to you. I am now your follower. I am now your son, your daughter, and I give myself to you. And today is the first day of the rest of my life. And I am so happy to be a part of your family, Jesus. Today, I give myself to you and it's in your name. I am now a son or a daughter of the most high God. Amen. Amen.